Now should be stopped. What did Ray Comfort talk about? He talked about showing people that they don't need God for a better life, but that they need Him for when they die. Now, there's a lot of people that might be able to live without Christ now, but they cannot die without Him. And when we look at, if you ever look at Ray Comfort's approach, bring it up on YouTube or whatever, I know he's done a lot of videos, he has a TV show. He doesn't start off with saying, you stole that, you're going to hell. He begins using the Word of God. He begins looking at the Ten Commandments. Well, Brother Eli, did you ever steal anything? Or do you think you're going to enter into heaven right now? Yep. But Brother Craig, did you ever steal anything in your life? Just one small thing. Oh, I never stole anything. Did you ever steal anything even as big as a pen in your life? Oh, well, maybe I stole a pen. Well, what does that make you? A thief. He gets them to admit their sin. Well, that makes me a sin. Did you ever lie before? Yeah, but it was for a good reason. But what does that make you? Liar. Liar. And everybody's hesitant because at that point they're realizing that, hey, I'm a liar. I'm a thief. Have you ever looked on a woman or a man in a love chapter, depending on your gender? Or have you ever commanded adultery? Well, no. Well, the Bible states that if a man looks upon a woman to lust after her, he's committed adultery already. Well, have you ever done that? Well, the majority of the guys, I can almost guarantee you, is going to say yes. Well, what does that make you? Is he a thief, a lying adulterer? It's a matter of getting to see their sin. That's what the Bible means. That every mouth should be stopped. Ray Comfort also talked about in his oh, cassette we talk, look, listened to the last two weeks about people won't realize their need for Christ until they see their need for Christ. He used the example of the person who had his big outrageous ticket paid for him. Well, that's great, but I didn't know I had a ticket. Well, when they sat down and showed him that, hey, there was a special convention for blind children, and there were 10 different markers at 25 of these, and you blew through each one of them, and your fine grew to this. Well, I didn't realize that. Once they saw their need, then they realize that they were guilty. Man in himself thinks that he's not guilty. Man is private. Man is boastful. He gets that from his father, the devil, who's a liar and a father of lies. But what got the devil kicked out of heaven? It was pride. If we are going to defeat pride, if we're going to reach man at the inner core, we need to make sure that they realize their need for Christ before it's too late. And when they realize that, hey, I'm a sinner, they are now at that crossroads where they have to make a decision. Are they going to accept Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, or are they going to keep going their own way? It's not a matter of, well, I'm good, I could, I'm a good person, but they have realized that they have sinned against God, they have broken the commandments, and they are doing it. If they died right then and there, they know where they're going to go. They know that they're going to go to hell unless they accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. That is the point that we want to bring them to. And we need to use wisdom when we get there because you can't just walk up to somebody and say, well, you're going out hard this weekend. You're going to hell. But when we step back, we use wisdom, we show them the Word of God, and they realize that, hey, I'm a sinner, and I need to make a decision. The other approach that don't work so well are those sandwich pours approaches. Um, I don't know if anybody in here are too familiar with them, but I'm sure it's, um, Brother Peterman, ourselves, um, the pastor probably, I'm sure, people that stand on the corner of the road with the signs on them, you know, you're going to hell, except Jesus Christ, they have a cross. Those really aren't that effective either. Because more likely, they're going to be the ones standing up there laying blasting that you're going to hell. So providing to that, once again, we're in that same boat. And guess what kind of reputation that gives to us Christians? It gives a sour one in the mouths of the people that are seeing it. It is eternal. But we as Christians, our command is go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. We have the command. There is no escaping it. 
But the question is, how are we going to approach it? Do we have a vision for the lost? If we don't have a vision for the lost, are we praying that we have a vision for the lost? William General, General William Booth said that if he could, in the final stages of training his soldiers, is what he called them, but those individuals that he was going to send into the street to reach the lost, if he could, he'd hang them over hell for 24 hours that they might know what they're fighting against, that they might have greater burden to reach the lost than ever before. That it would be imprinted excuse me, in their, in their minds. If we don't have a vision for the lost, if we don't have a vision of hell, that's where we need to start, in prayer. But we've already moved past that in Sunday school. And it's to the point where we need to start preparing ourselves. I hope none of us have probably ever gone into a test line. <clears throat> we went in there without study. Why? Because if we don't study and we don't know the material, what's going to happen on the test? We're going to fail. Why? Because we didn't know the material. We need to have a plan for evangelism. Whether we start looking at Bible verses and start trying to memorize them. Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, Revelation 3.20. Start trying to instill these things in our minds, these verses in our minds, in our hearts, that we might tell others about Christ. You know, for the wages of sin is death. But how does that become part of us? We become intentional on making it part of us. We begin preparing and planning. We sit down and say, okay, when, somebody, when I knock on this door and somebody answers it, this is what I want to say. Do you know Jesus Christ? If you die today, do you know where you're going to go? Or when somebody opens that door and I make that line, the first verse I want to go to is Romans 3.23. You know, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Or what if you don't answer the door? Am I just going to leave the door blank? Or am I going to leave them a track? Or am I going to leave them a pamphlet with the church hours on it and the church services? What's our plan? We start preparing to reach the lost. Now when we do this, we also need to be aware that we will face more opposition from the enemy. Because the devil loves when a Christian, he doesn't mind if a Christian is saved. He doesn't mind if they come to church. As long as all they do is sit there. We can look at the seven sons of Sceva. Their father was the priest. They were very religious. But they had no experience. They were religious, but they didn't know God. And what did the devil say? Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? They made no efforts in the past. But when we are intentional and when we are sincere and we are really going to win the loss for Christ, the devil will take notice and he will attack us. But at that point, we just strap ourselves, strap our feet on with the preparation of the gospel of Christ. We sink our feet in the ground and we just keep pressing forward. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We need to wrap up here and we'll continue talking about approaches next week to reach the loss. Does anybody have any thoughts, any questions, anything they want to add? If not, let's bow our heads and serve in prayer and prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that your God can reign so high that there's none like you, Lord. Even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that may come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate, Lord. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be in one mindset, one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may have his way, making himself visible if he so uh, desires. I pray, Lord, that our hearts and our minds will be plowed, that they be good soil for your word to fall on today, that your word would go with us throughout the week, Lord, that we would remember it even greater than that, that I would take root in our hearts, Lord. I pray that we would get a vision and a burden for the lost like never before, that it would be constantly there, Lord, driving us, Lord. And may we do 
not just reach one soul, but may be constantly pushing us forward to win as many souls as we can for you, Lord, that one day we may obtain that soul's winner's crown and throw it at your feet, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you anoint the pastor as he brings forth your word today, anoint his mind and his lips to bring forth your words, anoint the song leader and the musicians as they lead the songs you have us to sing, Lord, and give them a special blessing as well. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.